What is it that you like about jewellery in particular? I don't wear jewellery. Yeah. But I like shooting jewellery because it's very difficult. Okay. It's very complicated. It's probably the most complicated uh, thing to photograph. All right. That's uh, interesting. So what is it? I like that, challenge. What, what's difficult about jewellery that is more difficult than, than other products? Because jewellery, you can't stand it up. It will not. It's okay. like, you know, like a shampoo bottle. You just put it and it will okay. stand up, you know. You can't uh, um, stand up a pair of earrings. Yeah. Right? Okay. Then they are very reflective. Oh, of so course. you have to get yeah. rid of the reflections. They are shiny. You have to show that shine. Um, if you if you get the lighting lighting wrong, they will not look shiny. It's complicated. It, it's uh, um, it take it's very time consuming, and I like that challenge. You know. Okay. Hello, my name's Simon Tomlinson and welcome to the fourth episode of Your Tagline Here. This is a weekly podcast sharing real stories from real people. Each week I will interview a new guest to find out who they are and what their story is. And at the end of every episode I'll be asking the guest to provide their tagline for the episode to summarise their story into a short sentence that we can all remember it by. If you enjoy the episode, please do give us a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the future content. Also, if you have any questions for myself or today's guest, then you can leave them in the comments if you're watching on YouTube, or you can send us an email to hello at yourtaglinehere.com. Our guest for this episode is Rudolf, who is a professional photographer and runs a successful photography business called MO Studios, which is based in the jewellery quarter of Birmingham, where he specialises in jewellery photography. Rudolf is here today to talk about how he became a professional photographer, how he set up his thriving business and what his ambitions are for the future. But before we speak to Rudolf, I would just like to mention our sponsor, KitLab, which is a digital marketing company based in Birmingham in the UK. KitLab have over 15 years of experience specialising in branding, websites, search engine optimization, paid advertising, social media and more. So if you want to grow your business online, just head over to kitlab.com, which is K-I-K-L-A-B.com. OK, without further ado... Let's meet Rudolf. Hello, Rudolf. Welcome Hi, Simon. To, welcome Hello, to the everyone. studio. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks um, for having me. And yeah, I'm, well, I'm really pleased to have you here anyway, but I'm also pleased because you are the first guest to be in our studio. Great. <laughs> Great honour. <laughs> um, and yeah, thanks, thanks for coming along. I'm really looking forward to, to hearing your story about how you became a professional photographer. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to just go back in time a little bit and understand what is it that you were doing before you became a professional photographer? Well, I've been into photography um, for a long time, uh, since basically since I was 12. Obviously, I haven't been a professional photographer <laughs> since I was 12. I've been doing a lot of things um, I've been into um, farming even <laughs> <laughs> and then busking and other things, you know. So only for the past uh, um, around 12 years, I've been doing photography professionally. So did you, did you always know that you wanted to be a photographer? I actually always wanted, I always knew that I want to be a videographer. Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> because my, uh, basically my, uh, my father's friend, uh, his best friend, he was a videographer and he basically introduced me to videography. He always, when he came over to us, you know, to visit us uh, and when he stayed with us, he always had a camera with him, you know, and he yeah. was filming and he had uh, this old fashioned cameras, old fashioned projectors, you know, and he always pr showed us everything he, he, he's done before uh, or also the, the videos he, he, he um, uh, took of us, you know, maybe when he uh, visited us like uh, a month or a year earlier, you know, and uh, that was very exciting for me, you know, and that's probably where I fell in love with uh, with visual arts, you know, okay. but it's somehow it turned into photography okay. rather than videography. So what was it that made that, that change from 
video to still photography? It was actually my 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 uncle. Okay. Uh, my 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 uncle. He bought me a camera. Um, can you I remember what kind of camera it was? It was a, a very old uh, fashioned, uh, old fashioned camera. Okay. That was again back in eighties, in late eighties. Yeah, 80s. a proper film camera. It, it was a proper film camera, a uh, Soviet camera, which okay. was called Smena. Okay. It was very popular uh, uh, camera at the time in Soviet Union, and um, it's a, it's a it's a it's a film camera, thirty five millimeters film camera, but it's more like a compact film camera. Mm -hmm. It 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 has a lens, uh, but it, which is not changeable lens, but still lens, zoomable uh, lens. So it is a, sort of a mix of a uh, compact and an SLR camera. Yeah, so he bought me that camera, and yeah, it started from there, and I, I just, uh, um, I, I fell in love with photography, and I started to, to do it uh, regularly. I was 12 at, uh, at the time, and uh, I started to invest my, my pocket money into equipment. So, uh, uh, me and my brother, actually, we, both of us, we started to do film photography. What, we, what sort of stuff would you take photos of when you were 12? Everything. Uh, portraits, landscapes, uh, obviously not product photography, because yeah. e-commerce was uh, non-existent back in... in, in, in <laughs> In the 80s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, apart from catalogues, I suppose. Yes, true, yes. Well, the thing is that uh, um, we started to invest basically our pocket money into our equipment. Okay. We, we, we started to buy uh, darkroom equipment. We, we, we converted our cupboard uh, in our house, a cupboard where our mother was storing the, like, you know, the jars of the jam, you know. <laughs> we just cleaned it out, you know, yeah. and, and set up a darkroom in, in the cupboard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to do uh, proper, you know, everything from uh, developing the film to to to, to prints, you know, to uh, photos, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I was really into it, and then then you know I was a teenager. Then I had different interests. Then I sort of I lost the interest basically for photography. For um, but I still liked it. I always. Liked it. I was. I always. Uh, I always had a camera, you know. Um, but it, from from very like real passion, it turned into just uh, normal okay. hobby, you know. But when I finished my um, my A levels, uh, then I realized that actually I want to do it, you know, properly again. Start to do it again because it was mm -hmm. like starting to do it. Uh, you know, not from scratch, because obviously I had that photography background, but, but there were, you know, a few years, you know, like a gap, you know, where I didn't do any photography. So, uh, and, I, and, I, and I decided to uh, go and study photography. So okay. I basically enrolled in a co course, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at a college, a photography college. And um, I spent there, I actually dropped out because... Uh, um, it wasn't what, what I was expecting, you know, because since I had that photography uh, background already, I was able to do everything, uh, developing the films. Uh, uh, so you knew everything already. I knew everything, basically, didn't and you? Uh, basically those few months I spent there, I didn't learn anything. Okay, I was just uh, sort of uh, pretending to learn, you know, because I knew already everything. When I went there, you know, I was hoping, you know, that there will be like courses on creativity composition and and going out and trying things you know but it didn't happen maybe i, I dropped out too early you know okay but anyway i was sort of a little bit bored you know <laughs> <laughs> but it, it must be hard like when when you started photography at 12 and you've spent all that time uh, practicing and experimenting and learning all of those things just naturally by trying different things and like even creating your own darkroom and then going to uh, to do a course where they're starting everything from from the beginning that must be very difficult for you it was difficult because uh, I didn't need that yeah to be honest. of course I was able to repeat at that you know because it's like practicing you know the more you practice, the better you become. You yeah, know? yeah. Definitely. But again, I think I, I don't think that I needed the basics, you know, because it was all about the basics, you know, uh, and uh, so that's why I actually dropped out, you know, okay. because I didn't really. I I, I felt like it's not, I'm not I'm going nowhere, you know, because it's uh, it's not what I thought it would be. You yeah. Know? So how did you how did you go from that point of uh, from dropping out of the photography course that you were doing to then? 
going into doing it professionally what was the how did you make that that transition i was at the college uh, in in mid 90s yeah. right so digital photography was still uh pretty much non-existent i mean it was m probably the top photographers you know uh um advertising photographers were already using digital photography but you know in normal people didn't know anything about digital photography and then suddenly digital photography became more popular it, it became like a mass product you know and uh, it, w it is very different you know digital photography and film photography it's still photography but it's different mm -hmm. very different and uh, at the very beginning i sort of i didn't like digital photography at all and that okay. was one of the reasons i really stopped doing photography for oh, a while right. i didn't do any photography because i was upset seriously <laughs> i thought that digital photography is cheating you know okay. i was really like no i i i'm i'm i don't want to do that you know well, it's it's interesting because there there is a big difference between analog photography and digital photography, and I I do digital photography now, but I've never really done analog. But I can completely see where you're coming from. That it is, it's still a, a big skill doing digital photography. It but is. But there's a lot of things which are made a lot easier as a result of being able it to is, it, it capture is, things digitally. It it can seem a lot easier. Yeah. You know. Maybe on one hand it is easier, but on the other hand it is another skill. It's a very different skill, uh, and and uh, so it's not really uh, cheating as I thought. You know, initially <laughs> yeah. I thought that this is uh, you know this is so easy. You know, you just need to press the button and everything is there. You don't need to do anything. Of course, you skip that dark room bit. You know, because developing mm. uh, the film and and prints, you know, in dark room is more time consuming. But it doesn't necessarily mean that digital photography since you skipped that um, part you know is easier there is still a lot of uh, going on you know and and uh, again it requires a lot of skills you know yeah to, to do that you know photoshop skills you know and everything you know so it is it is a very different form of photography but still um, photography yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, i also think it's interesting how you've talked about how you've fallen in and out of love over, with photography yeah. over the years. Uh, so I, I presume after that period of thinking that it was cheating and falling out of love, that you then fell back in I love again. I fell back in it. love again. And then again, it's, 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 it just happened, you know. Um, I didn't really, I can't say that I planned you know, to go into photography, although I always had, uh, you know, at the back of my mind that I want to do photography because I bought a, digital camera compact okay. camera you know that was my really like my first digital camera it was a compact camera i just walked past the camera shop you know and i saw in the shop window that they they, were, they had like nice offers like 60 percent off you know i thought oh okay let's <laughs> give it a go digital photography okay Pro completely you know opposite to what i thought earlier the digital photography no i will never go into digital photography you know <laughs> but okay let's give it a go and i bought that camera you know a compact camera and again i started to enjoy it i i, I started to, to fall in love again with photography yeah. although it was a very simple uh compact camera yeah. you know um so yeah and then uh, it was then i i have to say that i'm self-taught photographer okay. because when i started film photography i learned it everything on my own by myself you know books then when i uh, got into digital photography i had to start again from scratch because uh, obviously post-production is very different yeah i didn't go to college you know uh, to learn digital photography I was again trying to find some uh, um, videos on on the internet. I'm not sure whether YouTube was already around. You know, yeah. now these days you can you can you can <laughs> learn everything on YouTube. You know, whereas uh, back you know in 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 that was like early 2000s probably. Yeah, so I think YouTube was maybe just about starting, yes, but it definitely yes. wasn't as prevalent as it is today. But anyway, there there was some information on the internet. You know, some videos, some. Uh, similar you know websites probably like uh, like youtube you know uh so i was watching some videos although it was a struggle you know mm. still books probably uh yeah i i think i had some 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 books you know i i was uh, you know reading on photoshop like you know yeah. uh how to how to 
learn Photoshop. Yes, yes, definitely. I remember that I, I had a book, you know, uh, which I found very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I th yeah, I think I think with with my development as well, I've I've started a lot later than you have. So. Yeah. M it's only really been over the last five or six years. So all of my learning has been on YouTube and I find yeah. it much easier to learn by being able to see someone demonstrate it and show it yes. rather than sometimes in books, it can be confusing. It can be confusing because it's sometimes it's really difficult to navigate, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not that easy to find, you know, that, that the, the thing you're after, you know, because it could be somewhere in the middle of another, you know, uh, subject you know because uh, so whereas on youtube you just type in what you what you're looking for and it will come up straight away mm -hmm. you know and you, you will watch that video you know on, on that particular thing you know so how long was it from when you start to get into digital photography to when you started to get uh when you started to work at a like professional level how long did that take? A few years. Okay. Yes, I was just practicing for not practicing. I didn't practice. I didn't. I, I mean, I was just uh, doing photography, enjoying it. You know, um, shooting whatever I can, learning Photoshop. You know, Photoshop two maybe very. Okay. You know, the, one of the first ones. <laughs> yeah. Then suddenly, you know, an opportunity uh, opportunity came. You know, uh, uh, along. So I was working in 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 a. In a warehouse, actually doing like normal warehouse jobs, you know, picking, packing, uh, dispatching, and uh, um, they 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 were looking for a photographer, product photographer. And that's how I got into product photography. Um, um, and and uh, before I was doing more portraits and you know like people photography. That was my thing, you know, and I, because I think you know before uh, e-commerce, everyone was doing. Portraits, <laughs> families, okay. you know, yeah. because only there were very few photographers doing um, advertising, you know, because e-commerce didn't exist, so uh, it was very difficult to get into uh, advertising photography. Of course, um, it was very difficult to, to to make it through, you know, because you you, ha you had to be like in the right place, you know, and uh, at the right time, and probably know the right people, you know. Otherwise, it was almost impossible. Mm. These days, it is a uh, a, a lot easier you know you can expose yourself uh, a lot easier you know on social media or yeah there's a, there's a lot more platforms out there and avenues to be able to promote yourself now with uh, yes. social media but uh, 10 or 20 years ago those things exactly. just didn't exist and I think that it's uh, more open I mean uh, that um, how can I put it I mean I think I think 20 years 30 years ago uh advertising industry was a lot more closed you know uh there were a few you know big players you know and it was very really difficult to get into uh uh in there uh which means that a lot very often you know it was based on like recommendations you know and very important to know the right people you know whereas now you can you can really you know if you are good you know and if someone sees your work you know they will they will reach out you know and they will invite you you know they will speak to you and and and, and that's 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 very different you know yeah yeah so definitely so what was this opportunity that you had in the warehouse well it's just uh, uh, they had an in-house photographer you know packshot photographer and 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 uh, can you just explain what pack shots are pack shots pack shots are basically uh, Packaging shots. Okay, that's that's what, okay. what it stands for. But it's a but product shot, you know, e-commerce product shot. Okay, so, so basically a, a photograph of a product on a white background. Okay, so, very, so was this your first experience of doing product photography? That was my first experience doing of product photography. Okay. But before that, I was obviously doing people photography, portraits, mm. uh, and and weddings and, and and families and I considered myself portrait photographer because I really liked it. I liked the um, portrait photography not as a, a service, offering the service to do some someone's portraits and earning money, but you know, just like I, I, I basically thought that if I was a painter I was I would probably paint portraits. Okay. You know? I like I liked the the idea, you know, of uh, uh, Sh capturing someone you know uh, yeah someone because you when you photograph someone's someone you know you photograph a character as well 
not just yeah, you know yeah. their face you know the, capturing and then you, their personality exactly and then you you obviously put in your creativity lighting composition and then it it's 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 it becomes like a piece of art you know yeah yeah absolutely so which is very different to for instance uh, product photography because basic product product photography like packaged photography there is very little creativity involved mm. or almost n- zero creativity you know which is a very technical thing yeah so uh, so after you got this this opportunity to do these uh, packaging shots how did how did that then turn into the business that you have now right so basically uh, i was doing it for a while um doing uh, uh, pack shot photography, uh, warehousing, uh, but they never l- really offered me uh, the the full time photography role, okay. right? which I was I was really hoping for, for hoping for that. I, I hoped that they would actually uh, you know say, come on, you're, okay, you're good at this, you know, let's because they needed one full time photographer. Uh, but I was contacted to do warehousing, you know, warehouse yeah. like packing, picking, packing, and uh, I was probably good at that as well. That's why that's probably <laughs> one of the reasons they didn't want me to uh, okay. to uh, to offer that role because they were able to uh, use me for both, you know, doing when needed, you know, warehousing or photography. And then at some point I just thought, you know, I, I didn't want to do warehousing. I don't want to be a warehouse uh, warehouse guy, you know. I want to be a photographer, obviously. Uh, so, and I left, you know. I thought, uh, if you, you know, it was, for, mo- for me, it was easier. I, I thought it's the best option, you know, to leave. Not was, to, was that a difficult decision to no, make? No, it wasn't a difficult decision okay. because I realized that, Finding a job is a full-time job as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. You can't really concentrate and focus on on that if 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 you have a full-time employment mm. uh, job. You know, it's just then you have just weekends, you know, and evenings. But most offices are closed. You know, it's sometimes very difficult to uh, to get a day off. You know, for an interview. Um, and and I thought, yeah, I, I'm I'm leaving. You know, I still have the opportunity to earn some money. You know. By doing photography, you know, I can, I could probably be able to pay my bills. And my point was, I leave, you know, and I do photography for myself. I do sort of into self-employment, yeah, and looking for another job at the same time. If it doesn't work, whichever you know works best, I will be happy if I can make it through. You know, if I can be a full-time photographer, you know, happy, very happy. If I find another job, also happy, you yeah. know. And then for a few months, I was doing like, uh, um, I was uh, basically self-employed. But since I, I, I left my job, basically, uh, like, I didn't have any client base. I didn't have a client base, basically. Not at all, you know. So it was difficult, obviously. So a few months, I was sort of, yeah, I was able to pay my bills. I had some photo shoots, you know, but then I thought, okay, I was still, ke- I was uh, I was looking for, for another photography job, you know, who could pay my bills, you know, and yeah. leave me maybe some disposable income as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I found another job um, uh, in, 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 um, in an auction house, you know, shooting jewelry. And that's ah, okay. how I got into jewelry photography. Okay. And that's how I fell in love with jewelry photography nice <laughs> because before that it was pack shots products like normal e-commerce okay. products and then suddenly still pack shots but jewelry pack shots <laughs> okay so uh, what is it that you like about jewelry in particular i don't wear jewelry yeah but i like shooting jewelry because it's very difficult Okay. It's very complicated. It's probably the most complicated uh, thing to photograph. All right, that's uh, interesting. So, what is it? I like that, challenge. What What's difficult about jewelry that is more difficult than than other products? Because jewelry, you can't stand it up. It will not. It's okay. like you know, like a shampoo bottle. You just put it and it will okay. stand up. You know, you can't uh, um, stand up a pair of earrings. Yeah. Right? Okay. Then they are very reflective. Oh, of so course. you have to get yeah. rid of the reflections. They are shiny. You have to show that shine. Um, if you if you get the lighting lighting wrong, they will not look shiny. They will not look polished. 
so that's something you, you have to work on it, you know, to get the right thing mm. right so it looks shiny. It's not uh, sort of, it's uh, glossy, uh, not matte, you know. It's very easy to uh, make it look matte, you know. Okay. <laughs> so um, it's complicated. It, it's... Uh, um, it take it's very time consuming and i like that challenge you know okay um and another reason why i i sort of switched from portrait from people photography to uh product photography because i'm an individualist i like working on my own okay. you know i like going out and meeting people as well you know uh, that's another reason why i still do wedding photography not regularly i mean regularly but not full time, yeah. maybe five weddings a year, you know, because I still enjoy it. I can go out, meet people, you know, have a laugh, you know. But then the rest of the time, you know, I will be in my studio on my own, which I enjoy a lot. Yeah. Because I can control everything. Okay. I can control lighting 100%. I can come in in the middle of the night, you know, and, <laughs> and, 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 and which I can't do if I do wedding photography, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, w well, I imagine with weddings, so I have photographed a couple of weddings before. It's not my particular favorite kind of photography, but um, there's a lot of things which are out of your control because you can't control the weather. You can't often control the lighting conditions. You can't but often you can control, control where people are. But you can control your artwork. Yeah. And that's the point, you know. That's, again, there is a challenge, you know. Yeah, to, to get yeah, definitely. The, to, get, to get it right, you know, uh, using the equipment, using the light, what you have basically without the option to control it you know and that's again that's a challenge and it's exciting as well mm. that's a, that's one of the reasons i like it because i can i can uh, basically get good results you know with using what i've given yeah you know not what i've chosen and that's 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 i enjoy it you know so how long ago was it that you decided to leave that full-time job working in the auction house and then decided to set up your own business. I spent about, I think I, uh, I, I was there for about three and a half years, roughly. And uh, I was doing uh, my full-time Monday to Friday job, uh, plus uh, doing photography in my spare time, Saturday, Sundays, evenings. So okay. I was building up my customer base. And then at some point, I just realized that I have um, quite solid customer base, not big, uh, but good, good enough, big enough. Plus, I've learned I, I learned some marketing tricks and okay. techniques. You know, uh, I was working on my website. I had already some traffic. You know, uh, through my website, and I thought, yeah, that's that. It's the right time now to to, to leave my job. It's a really brave decision to leave your job and, and set up your own business. But it sounds like you you were minimizing your risk because you already you already risk, had yeah. that portfolio of clients that you could then yes. utilize for exactly. your own business going forward. Exactly. What do you think what was the main challenge for you about setting up your own business and, and doing this uh, yourself? It's yourself. I think yourself you you are a challenge. Okay. You know, when you're starting out. Then there are a lot more obstacles and challenges when you are already in there, when you are already when you are already have a business, you know, and those are more uh, difficult to to sort of get over, you know, uh, to to resolve those problems. But when you are starting out, I think it's just you have to believe in yourself and and mm. you have to have that dream, you know, and that's that's it, you know. And then it will happen, I suppose. Yeah. Because if you do it the way I did it, you know, I did it, you know, I was working, I was in full-time employment, and then I was doing, you know, photography in my spare time, you know, with, you know, with that uh, sort of aim, you know, that at some point I will go into self-employment. So, so I will, I will be, I was preparing myself, you know. So then at that point, I don't think that there there were challenges, mm. you know. It's just the 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 decision, you know. You have to make the decision to run that risk, you know, and to leave your 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 full time secure job, you know. Yeah, that's a cha that's like like psychological, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, you know, to be ready. To, yeah, you know, to and it's risk. You know, yeah, because and it, it is, is a risk a little bit. You it know, is. Yeah, it's it's a brave thing to do, 
Um, and it is there's always going to be risk involved, but it sounds like you did it the right way because you you were building up your portfolio of clients on the side, so that when you made that step, yes. you already had. Um, you already had people that were that you were the working thing is, is with. I was going for it. I was going for it. Basically, I've been most of my life. I've been uh, self-employed. You mm. know, working for myself. And I, I realized that I understood that I will be working for myself when I was five. Yeah. You know, it basically because my, I think it's um, my father influenced me. You know, because uh, sort of uh, he wasn't a businessman. He was working for. Uh, he was a chef. He was working uh, um, in in a restaurant, you know. But the thing is, he wasn't just the head chef. He was also running the place. So he was, apart from cooking, which he did, but not a lot. He was more like into the managing the, the okay. place, right? So he was uh, dealing with the suppliers um, and everything, you know. Uh, so, and he has, he had his office, you know, and I... He's, the place was very close to the school I went to, you know, and every day after the school, I went to my father's place, you know, uh, where he worked, you know, and I spent a lot of time there, you know, in his office. And that's what I saw, you know, I thought that that's the way of doing it, you know, yeah. that you are the boss, you know, you have your office and you manage things, you know, you supervise everyone. And I had it in my, I've had it in my mind since, you know, since I was five, that I want my office, I want to run uh, uh, something, not necessarily the business, maybe you know, because if I was offered um, a really good, like very well paid job, like senior position, I would probably go for it, you mm. know, because I like the idea of running something, you know. Okay. In this case, it's my own business. You know? Yeah. So, what is it that you like the most about running your own business? I... Control that you have the uh, control, you know, of everything. I can. It's not just about making decisions, you know. I, 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 I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not, it's not uh, that I enjoy telling people what to do. I just uh, uh, enjoy the, that freedom, you know, that uh, uh, option that I can, you know, decide, you know. I can, yeah. I can, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm basically... Yeah, the decision maker. I yeah, think that's, yeah. that's the... Well, yeah, no, I, I completely understand that. Like, you are in control of everything yes, and you are control. making the decisions. So being able to have control over things, I think, is a, is a really valuable thing and something that can bring a lot of pleasure and a lot of re reward as well for what you're oh, doing. Reward, yes, because exactly. everything that you do, you're getting the reward, either financially or growing the business or whatever it is, rather than doing it for someone else essentially yes uh, so definitely. what is what's your ambition for the future where would you like your business to go to i obviously have a plan right and i would like to uh, to um to set up a, a busy photography studio yeah since there is uh, they, the market is huge uh e-commerce is doing very well at the moment mm. you know and majority of my clients are e-commerce businesses and uh, um there is potential. So that's what I'm trying to achieve at the moment, you know, to set up, um, uh, to build a studio, a big studio, busy studio. But again, it's not about, you know, employing people, you know, and telling people what to do. Uh, uh, and just, you know, uh, I'm not looking for that sort of like, you know, uh, feeling that, you know, I, I watch other people working, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the, my, the main uh, objective, the main uh, aim is just to uh, establish myself as a, as, a, as a photographer because if you're a photographer, it's your name, you know. Okay. You, 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 it's it's name that counts, you know. You are known by your name. So it's actually about myself, you know, that I want to be a photographer, a good photographer. I want to improve myself. Yeah. I want to get better but, and better but and better. I, but I know that you already are a very, very good photographer. Thank you. I, I'm all right, photographer, I think. <laughs> uh, because <laughs> there I, is still a room to, <laughs> for improvement, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's always room for improvement. Um, but, but yeah, I, well, I know from, from what I've seen you do that you are already a, a very good photographer. So you've, you've already achieved what you're al almost setting out. Are there any like, particular brands that you would like to, to work with? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to uh, 
do what I like, you know. Yeah. Well, I want to do photography, whether it's a small brand, a startup, or a big brand. Obviously, a big brand can sort of, you know, to give your business a big, you know, a kick, mm. you know. So uh, if someone suddenly, a big brand, uh, approached me you know i would obviously say yes i would start working with them i would mm. enjoy working with them because it's a lot it's it's uh, uh it's easy actually to work with big big brands because there is a there is a budget you know they have a budget they provide everything they provide um styling you know everything whereas if you f work for small brands then you need to do almost everything yeah. you know you need to be you need to be like Ten in one, you know. You have to be a stylist. You have to be a retoucher. You have to be an art director. You have to be uh, everything, you know. And that's very challenging. That's very difficult, you know. But again, I like it, you know. I like mm. uh, uh, doing that as well. But then, when you when you have work on a project, a big project for a big brand, you know, then you you have you can just focus on on photography, you know, because okay. uh, they will arrange everything for you, you know. So if, if there's anyone listening or watching this who is an aspiring photographer who wants to make it as a professional photographer, whether that's product photography, whether it's jewellery photography, whether it's portraits, landscapes, whatever it might be, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking or wanting to become a professional with a, with a camera in their hand? You have, to, uh, you have to work. You have to... Um if you dream of it, you know, then go for it. You have to set your mind, you know, and 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 go for it, you know, because it won't happen just like this, you know. Mm. You have to focus, you know. Uh, um, otherwise, yeah, it's it's uh, and take the risk, you know. Leave your job, you know, even if you don't have another job yet, you know. If you want to, even if you want to change your career, you know, you, you, if you are doing a job you don't like, you know. If you want to do a, find a better job, leave that job you have now, mm. and then you will find another job. The opportunity will come, you know. You will have more time to focus on, 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 on what you like, you know. So that's, that's what I did, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very, it is like a vicious circle, you know. You, if, you, if you're doing something you hate, you know, you don't enjoy. Because, as I said, earlier you know you don't have a lot of time you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, to look for something better you know um, because you're Monday to Friday then you come home tired you know you want to rest you know you have weekends but you, you sometimes you, you know it's again you might be so tired that you don't want to uh, do any like search for another job you know but there are always opportunities, you know, and if you if you if you if you look for it, you will find it, you know. So leave everything behind, you know. <laughs> Just go for it, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think um, I I think I think your story is really inspiring, and it's it's inspiring to me because I uh, I am on the journey myself to become. Well, I already am a professional photographer and uh, and video producer, but I'm not. Uh, at the same place as you are, I'm definitely further behind on, on the journey. So listening to your story and hearing about where you've got to now is inspiring for me. And I'm sure that there's a lot of other people that find it inspiring as well. And I think um, the things that you've illustrated in your story that you just, you keep on going and you keep on practicing exactly. and um, and opportunities will present themselves. Definitely, if, definitely. Um, if you keep on looking for them and if yeah. you keep on practicing the the skill of whatever it is that you're doing. Exactly, because if you don't, if you don't focus, you know, uh, then you you might miss that opportunity. You know, you won't even notice that there is that mm. opportunity. You know, whereas uh, if you really go for it, you know, they, yeah, there, there are tons of opportunities around. Yeah. You know, you can cre you create those opportunities at the end of the day. You know, it's you. Uh, uh, you know, you just need to spot it. You know, the spot that that you know and be there you know so yes um go for it awesome thank you so much rudolph uh, and the final question no is what is your tagline for this episode my tagline for this episode is uh, i might not be there yet but i'm definitely closer than i was yesterday you know so nice. focus you focus and you will get there 
Yeah, and I, I really like that because it shows that we, if we if we keep focusing on what it is that we want to do, we don't have to uh, do everything immediately. But it's about taking those small little steps. Exactly. Every, every single exactly. every single day, we just have to take one little tiny step closer step to by where step, we are. Exactly, and it's it, it it's n it's never ending process. You know, you will you, you you will get there eventually if you try. You know, but if yeah. you don't try. You know, if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you will never win. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think also like even when you have made it, like when you do have your your own business and you are successful, like you are, then you still have ambitions of where you want to go in the future, and you still like ev every day you're learning something new, and you're yes, you're 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 progressing, and you're learning, and you're developing. Uh, so even when you have become successful, there's still room for for growth and there improvement. Is, there is, yes, of course, yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much for, no, for coming thank, on the podcast. It was fascinating listening me. to your story. And like I said, for me, I find it personally inspiring uh, because I'm on that journey myself uh, to, to be and to get better at being a, a professional photographer and video producer. And I'm sure that there's lots of other people who uh, want to be a photographer that are watching and listening. And for other people that just want to do something else, whatever it is, then uh, exactly. your story is yeah. inspiring for them That's as well to uh, kind of you can apply it to you know to not only photographers to whatever you do you know yeah. if you want to be i don't know a, a rally dr driver you know <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you need to get into the car you know <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yes of course awesome thanks so much rudolph my pleasure okay that brings us to the end of this episode i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy this episode then please do give us a like and hit the subscribe button as well to make sure that you don't miss out on future content um, next week we'll be interviewing another guest to find out what their story is uh, so please do tune in and i will see you then